question one. I left this to last because it's a bit sneaky because you're so in this mode of, for goodness sake, the exercise is called circular motion. Of course it's circular motion, right? <laughs> Except if you scrutinize question one with me, it says, OA is a fixed horizontal interval of length one meter. Particle P moves upwards from A with that velocity uh, in a direction perpendicular to OA. Um, AOP, we're just going to call it theta. Find the angular velocity. So tell me where they said the word circular in there. Answer, they did it. In fact, if we start to draw this thing now, right? Uh, whoops, wrong color. OA is horizontal. It's one meter long. Okay. And then they say P is moving from A here. What direction is it moving in? Upwards. Upwards. In a direction perpendicular. Here. Okay. No circles involved. So really this question is actually about, can you understand, just like I did here, right, the difference between linear velocity and angular velocity. Can you convert between those in the necessary way? Okay. So I'm trying to find, this is, what is this? This is P up here. We call that theta, right? So in this context, omega is still d theta on dt. It's just that the theta on dt isn't going to follow the nice neat circular rules for us because it's growing, but it's growing at this unusual rate, right? Um, in a circle, constant linear velocity means constant angular velocity, yes? But look, this guy is moving up and up and up. You can imagine, at this point in time, at the beginning, this angle is going to grow really fast, right, at the beginning. And then as you get further and further away, right, it's just going to sort of slow down, right? So the theta on dt and omega is going to be a variable. It'll depend, I think that they said, they said at time t seconds, which is kind of their clue to you to say, this is in terms of time t seconds. Okay, so we've got a bit of a diagram here. A bit of a diagram. Um, I've got my distance there. Yep, very good. Now, in order to get to theta, right, <coughs> do theta on dt, I need to be able to talk about this other quantity that's changing, right? It's v equals two meters per second. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call that rather x. So this guy up here is dx on dt, okay? Uh, obviously you could choose anything you like for that, but I think there's only one variable. It's only moving in a straight line. Let's go with x, okay? So I know that dx on dt is equal to two. So from that, I can get an expression for what x is, right? How would I get from here to that? What is this equal to? Integrate with respect to Yeah, very good. So I'm going to do it with definite integrals. So if I integrate the left-hand side, right, um, it's just dx, so you're going to get x. I'm going to go from Zero. naught to x. So I'm looking for, like, where do I start, okay? Where, when am I at that initial um, spot? Okay, when am I at a? On the right-hand side, I'm going to have an integral. It's 2 dt. Now, I have to think about what are the variables, or rather, what are the boundaries that match these guys, right? So at some time t, I'll be at some position x, right? So I'll just say t of x. What time am I at a? And the answer is 0. All okay? So this is just trying to get away from working out the constant as a secondary step. This, of course, is just going to be x take away 0. Uh, on the right hand side, what am I going to get? T, T minus three. Yep, there's my primitive, and now I can evaluate it to the bottom. So x is just going to be 2t. That's nice and Which of course it is. It, times zero, you start at zero, and every second that passes, you're doubling that, um, whatever the time is to get your distance. Okay? So there's my expression. Okay? Now, I think this is all the pieces that you need. Remember, I'm trying to get to d theta on dt. I know what dx on dt and x are. So what's going to link me to get to d theta on dt? How am I going to do it? I'm in a right angle triangle. I am in a right angle triangle. But I'm trying to relate an angle to a side, not sides to other sides, right? So therefore, I'm going to have to go for trig, OK? So in this triangle, right angle is here. So that's the opposite side. And here's the adjacent, uh, sorry, this is the, yeah, here's the adjacent side, right? So tan is going to give me the connection between x and theta. So I'm going to say tan theta is equal to x over 1, which is, which is 2t. Like so. 
So now how do I get to D theta on DT from there? Okay, so I can take tan inverse of both sides if I like. Or I or I could yeah, so I've got some I've got a whole bunch of choices here, right? So for example, I could actually differentiate both sides with respect to T, for instance. If I do that, I'm gonna have this uh, two, two over here. What can I do with this? What can I do with this? This is kind of like implicit, right? Remember, I'm trying to get to d theta on dt, or dt on t theta. They're the same thing, right? Just look at this for a second. We can pull a trick on this, just like we've done many times before, to differentiate something when the variable we've chosen is wrong, right? This is with respect to theta. So we're going to differentiate this with respect to? With respect to theta, right? So if I say, okay, let's change that to d theta, d on d theta, right? What am I going to have to multiply by to make sure that this is actually all equivalent? Right? Yeah, is this, is this all equivalent? Okay. So therefore you can see Im implicit differentiation does this. This is what I actually want. So I'm going to get, <coughs> excuse me, uh, omega, that's d theta on dt, is 2 on, okay, can someone tell me what this is? This is just sec squared theta, okay? But I kind of don't want this, into, that's, that's useless to me, right? So what am I going to substitute here? Do I need to make a substitution that complicated? Yeah. Oh, no, I just need to get this back in terms of tans, right? Pythagorean and then he's going to help me. Yeah. This is 2 on 1 plus tan squared, except I know what tan is, it's 2t. So this is 2 on 1 plus 4t squared. Are you happy with that? Actually, the way I did it? Now you could differentiate this in as many ways as you like. You could take tan inverse. What would happen if I took tan inverse of both sides? Uh, you would get theta on the right hand side, you would get tan inverse of x on the right hand side. By the way, why can't I take tan inverse of both sides? Because the angles between 0 and high Very good, I've got an acute angle, so everything is fine. So I, I'm not going to say that, because well actually I will, I'll just say uh, 0 is inclusive. There you go, all fine. Now what do I do from here? Differentiate with respect to x, like that, because what else can I do? What's the derivative of this? Yeah, so far so good. I want this in terms of t, and I want that in terms of t, right? What am I going to do? Chain rule, chain rule. So if I go here to convert this into d theta on dt, I better multiply by... That's a relief, because I know exactly what dx on dt is. If I multiply the um, left-hand side, I better multiply the right-hand side. Like so? Oops, sorry, that's, that's a D. Okay. What would you like me to do next? So these guys cancel, right? So there's my omega that I wanted, okay? Over here on the right hand side, that's just 2. Oh, look, isn't that suspicious, right? And I already know x is equal to 2t. This is just like what I had before. Okay. And I would view those as somewhat similar in difficulty. I wouldn't say one is clearly better than the other. You've got to go through much the same steps. It's just which angle do you prefer? Get it? Angle? See what I did there? Never mind. <laughs>